You're listening to the School Leadership Reimagined Podcast, Episode 205. How do builders like us make a dramatic difference in the lives of our students in spite of all the obstacles we face? How do you keep your vision for your school from being held hostage by resistant teachers, uncooperative parents, ridiculous district policies, or a lack of time, money, or resources? If you're facing those challenges right now, here is where you'll find the answers, strategies, and actionable tips you need to overcome any obstacle you face. You don't have to wait to make a difference in the lives of the people you serve. You can turn your school into a success story right now with the people and resources you already have. Let's get started. Hey, Builders, welcome to another episode of the School Leadership Reimagined podcast. I'm your host, Robin Jackson, and today I have something really cool for you. Many of you know that last week we did a free behind the scenes filming of our brand new course called The Culture Cure. Now, ultimately, that course is going to go inside of Buildership University, but We invited you all to come join me on the journey as I'm filming it. That way you can keep me company. You get access to the material in the course and all of that's free. And I get the benefit of having a live audience to talk to. So much fun. And so what I thought I would do today is for those of you who couldn't make it live, I thought I would give you a little taste of what you missed. This is one of the teaching segments inside of The Culture Cure where I talk about the idea of story. So to give you a little background, we believe in Buildership University that your school culture is comprised of two components. It's comprised of the habits, the organizational habits you have, and the story that your school is telling. And so your habits and your story create your culture. So in this segment, I'm talking about the four core stories that a school can tell. And here's why this is so important. The story that your school tells determines the behaviors that you see inside of your school. It determines how people feel about your school. If your school is telling a particular core story that we're a failing school, that, that, that we've tried for years and we haven't been able to figure it out, that our staff is not stellar, then people behave differently in that school, then they would behave in a school, the same school. But if that school is telling a story of we're rebuilding, we're moving towards success, we're going to make sure that every child is successful. So today, I thought I would share with you the part where I was teaching about the four core stories. And as you're listening, I want you to think about what story is your school telling? Because if you could understand the core story, then all of a sudden the behaviors make sense. So I'll give you an example. I use this example in the course in a different segment, but I think it's really apropos here. So imagine you are driving down the street and all of a sudden a rock slams into your windshield and you swerve and you pull over to the side of the road and you see a little boy holding a slingshot and you realize that he is the one that threw the rock at your windshield that made you almost crash. Now, how would you react? Would you be angry? Would you be frustrated? Would you feel compassion for this poor little soul? Again, it depends on the story behind the rock throwing. So let's say that the little boy comes up to you and says, listen, I'm sorry I had to hit your car, but I didn't know another way to get you to stop. My mom is very sick. We don't have a ride. Can you help us, please? We're over here. We were hiking. She fell out and I'm terrified she's not breathing. Now, all of a sudden you feel differently about that little kid throwing a rock at your car. Now, imagine if on the other hand, you stop the car and got out and little boy say, ha ha, got you. (laughs) I hit your car with a rock. Again, you feel differently. And what made you feel differently? It wasn't that the, the fact that the rock hit your car. What made you feel differently was the story behind the rock hitting. And so if you understand the story that your school is telling, you understand a lot about what is broken in your culture and what needs to be fixed? Do you understand a lot about why people behave the way that they do? So if you ever find yourself wondering, why are the people in this school behaving this way? A good indication, an explanation of their behavior comes down to the core story 
that your culture is telling right now. Take a listen. And then once we're done, we'll come back in and talk about it a little bit more. Next section is where you're going to get involved because in this next section, we're going to talk about the core story that your organization is telling. So if you're at the district level, I want you to think about this from two ways, right? So Sean, think about this from not only the district story, but if you have a school that has a toxic culture, what story is that school telling versus another school in your district? What story is that school telling? Hey, Audrey, I didn't see you there. Um, and so you're looking at you're looking at the the, the district wide story, but you're also looking at the individual stories of the schools, right? Now, if you are in a school, I want you to think about your school, right? If you're in an organization, nonprofit, church, anything like that, think about your organization, and I want you to think about what story your organization is telling. Now, there are a lot of stories, right? You know, you have the story of how you got founded. You've got, you know, the stories that people pass down. When you first came into your organization, somebody probably had a story, right? They were like, oh, mm, don't trust her. Why? Oh, because you know what? One time when I needed the TV and she, and, and audio video, I signed it out for the media center and she stole my TV and showed it to her class. So you can't trust her. You got to watch her. See, that's what we're doing. Instead of saying you can't trust her, I don't like, I don't know her. So I, I'm, I'm, but you tell me that story and now I don't trust her. Do you see how that works? So there are, we're, so there are all kinds of stories that happen, but all of those stories come from the, gro- the, the core story that your school is telling right now. And there are four core stories that your school is telling. So this section is going to talk about those four core stories. During this section, what I want you to do is think about your organization and try to figure out what is the core story your organization is telling. Now, I already know there's somebody out there who's going to say, well, we're telling all of the stories. You know, there's somebody out there who wants all the stories, right? It's always one at the core, at the core. You might find elements of the other stories in your school, but there's always one at the core. So that's what I want you to look for. Make sense for everybody? All right, here we go. Um, So welcome to this module where we're going to discover the core story that your school is telling. So the first thing you need to know is that every school, every district, every organization is telling one of four core stories. And so we're going to talk about that. And while we're doing that, I want you to think about your school, your organization, and what story, what is the core story your organization is currently telling. All right. The first story that an organization might tell is what we call a cautionary tale. A cautionary tale is a story about what not to do. This is usually an organization that's headed in the wrong direction. Usually a cautionary tale is a, is a, is a school or a district that has had a history of failure. It's going down and people have almost given up. And because of that, The culture is shaped by the story. So here's how you can tell if your school is telling a cautionary tale of a story. The culture is characterized by a lot of avoidance. People are trying to avoid avoid pain. They're trying to avoid failure. They're trying to avoid things getting worse. And so the conversations are around how to stop the bleeding or how to make sure that we don't get worse and not about how to grow. Also, there's a palpable lack of safety in a school where that's telling the cautionary tale story. There's also a lack of trust and that lack of trust creates a lot of back channel communication. So the back channel becomes more effective and more prevalent than the formal lines of communication. There's a lot of parental suspicion and there's a real lack of parental support in that school. The parents don't trust the school and that attitude often gets transferred to the kids because the kids see themselves as already failed. They see themselves as part of a failing school and they adopt that identity in themselves. So when you're working in a school that's telling that cautionary tale story, the school feels stuck. And as a result, people have no hope. Uh, there's There's almost this feeling, underlying feeling of despair. There's a lot of conflict and people deal with each other from a place of shame. Either they are shaming other people or they're feeling shame themselves. Those are some signs that your school might be telling a cautionary tale. Now, 
The next kind of story that your school or organization may be telling is a story of history. It's a historical story. And that's a school that's kind of stuck in the past. All of your best days are behind you. It's a school that used to be better. So people say, well, it didn't always look like this around here. We used to have this or we used to have that. And so it's a school that's kind of stuck in the past. And in that school, you can tell if your school is telling the history by looking at the focus. The focus in a history is on how things have always been done. Everybody's looking backwards, not forwards, looking to this is the way we've always done it. This is the way it's always been. They always, you'll hear them say things like, oh man, this school used to be great. This school used to have this. Uh, These kids are different from the kids that used to be here. This community is going down or this community is changing. Maybe we don't say it's going down. Our demographics are changing, but they're not saying that as information. They're really longing for the way things used to be. And so in this culture, people are more focused on trying to recover or catch up versus gain, right? So people are trying to, you know, our test scores went down last year. We got to get them back up. They're not trying to get better. They're just trying to get back to zero in a lot of cases. Um, There's a fear of failure in this culture because they're worried that they're sliding backwards. People are very afraid that they're almost about to fail, which creates another level of stress in the culture. And as a result, people are afraid to take risks because they don't want to fail because they're afraid of losing more ground. In this culture, people feel like they've lost ground. Things are not the way they could be or used to be. And so people don't take risks. And so to avoid taking risks, people spend their time enforcing rules, tradition, and conformity. And so sometimes it's the teachers push rules more than people, right? So they want kids to be punished a certain way because those are the rules and we need the kids to follow the rules. They don't like it when you show grace or mercy because you feel it feels like you're, you're, you're letting down the standard. You hear a lot of conversations about the standards and we need to uphold the standards um, in, a, in, a, in a school that's telling a history. People hold on to their traditions long after those traditions serve them. So in a school that's telling a history, they're, they're, people are focused on the way things always have been done. This is how we do things. And when you question it, it feels very threatening. People are also focused on conformity. So in a school that's telling a history, that you might have an administrator who goes in and says, I want everybody to do this. And whether or not it's right for that teacher's teaching style, they're focused on, we got to get everybody back to doing the same thing. And it's about conformity and to the sacrifice of individuality. And that also extends to the kids. There's a lot of resistance to new ideas. New ideas, are they feel threatening, right? So when people come in with a different way of doing things, people will dismiss those ideas or make fun of those ideas or shut those ideas down. And there's a lot of blame. Because the, in a culture that's telling the history story, history, people feel like we have to, we're holding on to what we have before we lose it. And anytime they start losing, they blame somebody. They blame, and then they tighten up and get, they, they make things even tighter because they don't want to let go of what they have. Now, the third kind of story, core story at that organizations can tell is what I call an anecdote. An anecdote is a, 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 a is a culture where there are where there are pockets of excellence, where there are some good things happening, and because of that, people feel like that that they feel like, well, we're doing some things good. Not everything is good. We recognize that, but we're doing enough good that we're making progress. When in fact, they're taking two steps forward and two steps back. So when your school is telling an anecdote, there's no consistency. You have, you have ups and downs. And the reason you have ups and downs is because everybody's chasing the next anecdote. Everybody wants that good feeling again. We did this last year and it really worked. We want to have something else that feels like it works. So, so we, need to, we need to make sure that we do something that is going to feel good again. So there's a lot of shiny object syndrome happening where people are chasing the next best thing. Um, so every year in a school that's telling an anecdote, there's a new program. There's a new approach. There's a new piece of research-based uh, strategy that we're using. 
But it's also a false sense of security because enough good is happening that it helps you to ignore the bad things that are happening. And in a, in a, in a culture that's an anecdote, good becomes the enemy of great. And so people are satisfied with good and they don't pursue greatness because good feels good enough. And people get really comfortable, right? So in a, in, a, in a school that's telling an anecdote, they're not, there's not a lot of conflict. Um, people are just comfortable and even comfortable in their mess, right? So people just say, this is the way it's always been. This is as good as it's going to get. And they're okay with that, even though there's better out there. It's often harder to get them to move in an anecdote, in an anecdotal culture, because the, they're just comfortable. They're just, you know, it's hard. It's like leaving a comfortable, warm bed and getting out into the cold and trying something new. But because there's no consistency, over time, you get a sense of initiative fatigue and burnout because you're always chasing the short-term win, the good feeling, the next anecdote, and you're not playing them for the long-term. And also, in an anecdotal culture, there's a lot of judgment because, remember, there are pockets of excellence. And so the people say, well, we're doing it great. What's wrong with you? And so anytime someone isn't creating that next anecdote, they get judged. Now, the next one in the last story is a success story. In a culture that has a success story, this is a culture that's making steady and consistent progress towards a 100% goal. And so because of that, the growth mindset pervades this culture. People are fo focused on the goal, so they're not focused on their own egos, so they're not worried about failing. They are learning and growing, and 100% feels audacious at first, but they make progress, and the more they make progress, the more they see that they can do it, and the more they do it. In a success story, you have ownership and accountability. People are not renters in a success story. People believe and own the outcome and they feel accountable for their part, the part that they will play in achieving that outcome. In a success story, there's a lot of innovation and prudent risk taking. People aren't taking wild, crazy risks, but because they're guided by a vision and a mission and core values, the risks that they take, as long as they fall under the umbrella of the vision, mission, and core values, those risks are prudent and they often pay off. In a success story, people are not working harder and harder and harder. In a success story, people have learned to leverage resources. So instead of working harder, 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 people are being smarter about their work and they're leveraging. There's a sense of momentum in the culture. If there's a feeling in that culture that we're gaining ground every single day. And because of that, the culture becomes closer and closer as a community. We talked about earlier the difference between feeling like a community and a family, and the culture feels safe enough to form a strong community because they're achieving their goals. And the, the, the last piece is that it's, this is a culture that feels safe. Doesn't mean that everybody's comfortable all the time. The culture is constantly pushing, but people feel safe to take risk, to speak their minds, to contribute, to learn. People feel safe to fail in this culture without blame, shame, or judgment because the focus is on achieving the goal and not on the individual person. So what I'd like for you to do now is take a moment and think about your school culture. What story is your culture telling right now? And in the next module, we're going to talk about how you can take the story, whatever story it is your culture is telling right now, and how you can change the story your culture is telling and turn that story into a success story. All right, now that you've had a chance to listen to the four types of stories, here's what I want to challenge you to do this week. I want you to take a look at the culture in your current school, and I want you to ask yourself, what story, what is the core story that undergirds this culture? If your culture is telling a cautionary tale, then the behaviors in the organization are consistent with that story. And if you want to change the behaviors, you have to change the story. Same thing is true for a history, an anecdote. And if you are already telling a success story, the danger around success story is that you can get complacent. And so how do you hold on to that success story? How do you keep telling that success story in your culture? So I want you to think about that this week. And then I want to invite you to join me at Builder Ship University because 
in Buildership University, no matter what story your school is telling, we work with you. And our goal in Buildership University is to help you turn your school, no matter what story it's telling, into a success story in the next three years. And we do that with a very structured, systematic approach that helps you understand the story your school is currently telling and then put the proper things in place, do the right work for the story, right? So if your school is telling a cautionary tale, you're going to need different tools than if your school is already telling an anecdote. And so we understand what each kind of story needs, and then we help you build the things that can take whatever story your school is telling and turn that story into a success story. Right now, we have cohorts open for Buildership University, but the cohort closes on this coming Monday, if you're listening to this in real time. And so you need to hurry up and go ahead and join. All you need to do is go to buildershipuniversity.com, click the button there to join. Now, a lot of you may want to invest in Buildership University using a purchase order. And if that's you and you need help with gathering all the materials you need to be able to submit your purchase order, we have a PO packet as well. And so if you click, if you look on that page, you'll see a button that shows you how to download the PO packet. And it has a lot of what you need, including a justification letter and a lot of the forms you need to submit in order to get your PO started. And if you're worried that your PO won't get submitted on time before the deadline, just reach out to us by giving us a call at 1-888-565-8881 and tell us that you are working on a PO and you want us to hold your spot. And that allows us to know that you're coming and hold your spot and it gives you time to work through your systems, you know, the paperwork that your system requires in order to get your PO process so that you can join Buildership University. You need to move quickly though, because if you don't give us a call or you don't register, we won't know you're coming and the doors are closing on this coming Monday. All right. I hope I see you inside of Buildership University where you can begin to turn your school into a success story like a builder. I'll see you next time. Hey, if you're ready to get started being a builder right away, then I want to invite you to join us at Buildership University. It's our exclusive online community for builders just like you, where you'll be able to get the exact training that you need to turn your school into a success story right now with the people and resources you already have. Inside, you'll find our best online courses, live trainings with me, tons of resources, templates and exemplars, and monthly live office hours with me where you can ask me anything and get my help on whatever challenge you're facing right now. If you're tired of hitting obstacle after obstacle and you're sick of tiny little incremental gains each year, if you're ready to make a dramatic difference in your school right now, then you need to join Buildership University. Just go to buildershipuniversity.com and get started writing your school success story today.